All right, we're getting to that point where uh, next step is start putting the guitar together. Uh, and I kind of got stalled because um, I've been doing some thinking. The the two guitars that I built previously to this, I had uh, a guy that used to uh, work at Martin. He's a retired. He retired, but uh, he used to work in the finishing department. He's got his own finishing shop. So I had him shoot lacquer for me, uh, nitrocellulose on my first two good guitars so they were essentially completed the neck was already attached the only thing that wasn't attached was the bridge so he finished them without the bridge and then I just had to mount the bridge after they came back from uh, the finishing process but I, I kind of want to finish this guitar myself and I don't have lacquer spray equipment it's not the friendliest stuff to uh, to spray so I've been doing some research and I think uh, what I'm gonna do is French polish the body and the top with shellac and I'm going to try this stuff called U-Butte. It's like a hard shellac. It's supposed to give you a fairly durable finish. And you can see there's true oil here. I'm going to do the neck in true oil. Just uh, the mahogany. And I think for that process I want to finish the neck separately before I attach it to the body. And finish the body separately uh, without the neck being attached. So I think, you know, I've still got some lines on the guitar, like I've got my center line here. So I think the next step will be just to uh, put the neck on with the screws and bolts in here on the mortise and tenon, get that mounted on the body, and then set my bridge, find out exactly where the bridge is going to go. And once we do that, I'm going to uh, just pop a couple, I'll probably pop the bridge holes in here and um, then the, the, the bridge I've got a couple uh, like bolts that you can put the bridge on temporarily and actually string the guitar up but I don't think I want to do that till after I have it finished just to check it out. I'll have to, I'll have to think about that. I'm not sure uh, if maybe I'll string it up in the white before I start the finishing process and um, then after that, the bridge is set, you know, the position's all set. I'll take the bridge back off and then do the finish or start the finishing process. All right, I mounted the uh, neck back to the guitar. I just got it bolted on. And I've got my uh, handy laser guide here again. And I tried to line it up with the, the center of the neck. You can see it's kind of going through the center of the inlays there. And then if we follow the red line to the back, it's it's right on my center mark. So we know the the neck as far as following the center line of the guitar is good. So we'll just have to check the uh, the height where the bridge is going to be. All right, now that we know that we've got the neck on the center line, gotta make sure that the angle is still okay. <clears throat> After doing a little bit of sanding to get that heel cap on but putting a straight edge on there and, and putting the bridge where it's supposed to be the straight edge should just about hit the top of the bridge and you can see that's exactly what it does it's it might be a 32nd inch uh, just a sliver of light coming through there so that should be perfect alright here's a bridge sitting on the guitar and because the top is radius, we radius it to that uh, 28 foot dish. The bridge has got a flat bottom, so I don't know if you can see that, but it rocks. So what I'm going to have to do to make a, a decent fit on the top instead of just smashing it down <coughs> and making it conform uh, to alleviate the stress, I'm going to put a radius on the bottom of the uh, of the bridge. And to do that, I, I took a one of my sanding blocks because this is nice hard maple and I put the top basically just put it in the dish and sanded it back and forth till I got a 28 foot radius on the top of here. I'll be able to put some self stick paper on there and sand the bottom of that bridge. Uh, but right now I'm gonna make like a sanding call kinda trace the shape of the bridge on here. I'm gonna sand this down. And then what this will allow me to do you know set that up on top of the the bridge and 
hold it and it'll be like a sanding block. It'll just make it a lot easier. You'll see. Okay, I made this holder for the bridge so we can uh, sand it on that radius block. It'll just fit on there. We'll just put some sandpaper on there and then I can get something to hold it with. Okay, I put some 80 grit sandpaper on here and I marked the bottom with a white pencil on the bridge here so we can see where we're taking off. And I'm just going to slowly sand it on here until I get all those white lines off. Down to just the light line here on the end, so just a few more passes here and we should be good. All the lines are gone, so we should have that 28 foot radius on here. So let's just take it over the guitar here and see how it sits now on the top. Now it doesn't rock anymore. See, it's nice and tight to the top. On a Martin Long scale, I know that from the nut to the 12th fret, it's like 12 inches and 11, 12 and 11 sixteenths inches. And then from the 12th fret back to the saddle in front of the on the treble E string. <clears throat> Instead of going 12 and 11 16 so we got to add a little bit for compensation. So um, typically that's like 12 and 3 quarter. So that's the first measurement I'm going to do is make sure that we've got the uh, the high E string at the at the right area here on the saddle. And right now it is. It's right at it's right at 12 and 3 quarter. And I kind of double checked with this uh, long scale too that I've got. Um, let's see here. It is. If I put the nut right there, I can see that the 12 fret is right at the kind of the front of the saddle. Uh, so taking in some compensation and moving it back, it's um, it's good. The next thing we got to do. Let's kind of center the bridge here, make sure that the, the bridge pin holes are the same distance. And we can do that just by running a straight edge basically along the neck here. So I'll do that on both sides and just kind of see how far the, the pin holes are, the bridge pin holes are from the, uh, from the straight edge and make sure they're identical on both sides. So this is basically how I'm doing it. I got two straight edges right along the the side of the neck there, and then I'm just measuring to the middle of the first hole and just making sure that it matches this. Which right now they do. So I know I've got that right. So we've got scale length right, and uh, we know we've got the bridge centered. All right, the last thing to do is just make sure that the bridge is kind of perpendicular to the fretboard that we're the same distance from, I'm taking it from the last fret here, the middle of the last fret. It's just a, a hair over eight inches to the corner of the bridge. The same thing on this side. So as it sits now, it looks like it's in the right position. Uh, I'm going to double check all this and then I'll put some tape on here to hold it. The bridge is now in the right position. It's been uh, checked several times and I uh, put a little tape on here to just keep it where it's supposed to be. So uh, I got a 3 six inch, three sixteenths inch drill here and I'm just going to pop a hole in the first hole slot here or the first hole the high E string now what I'm going to do to keep
keep this kind of uh, solid, keep it from moving around. I've got these uh, these bolts, bridge bolts, <clears throat> which are actually designed that you can run a string through them. We're not there yet. We still got to fret the guitar and put the nut on. But um, I'm going to put this in just to help hold this while I drill the other holes. I've got the first bolt in and tight so that'll help hold this keep it from moving around so now I'll do the basey put the other one in and then we can do the other four, four holes Okay, we pop the rest of the holes in here. Well, we got the bridge placed and drilled, so this is where it's going to sit. And the next step, I guess, is we're going to take it apart again. Because uh, I want to start the finishing process. Um, it'll be easier to... I'd like to finish the neck off the guitar. As I say, I'm going to use troil on the mahogany. And... Um, French polish this with uh, that U butte uh, shellac that's a polymerized shellac. Um, so basically, I still have to do a final sanding on the body. The neck is pretty well sanded. Uh, I'm going to, I was talking to a guy that does a lot of finishing in the true oils, and he'll actually take the neck down to 1500 uh, grit on the micro mesh. So I've got to do that because I'm only down to 320 right now. But I think when I take the neck off too, what I'll do is uh, make sure that the tuners fit these holes. I'm not sure what size. They look like 3 16 but I'll make sure that the tuners will fit in here. Because we're going to finish the headstock too. Uh, and then after the neck's done and the body's done, neck goes back on. We'll radius the, um, actually flatten with the radius, the fingerboard. Fret it and cut the nut slot and glue the bridge on and that'll that'll be it it'll be done I'm gonna take the bridge back off and the neck off Here's a look inside the guitar just showing that we um, hit the bridge plate right in the middle. Um, so that just means that you know we had it in the right position. Because I've heard that instances where sometimes the bridge plate's in the wrong spot and when you drill your holes you 
either miss it or you know you, you catch it too close to one of the ends but this looks really good and there's the neck I got it in the vise here um, I think the next thing I'm gonna do here's my tuners it's basically two parts this has got a it's gonna come up from through the bottom here okay but the the hole has to be large enough to accept accept the tuner here and I think that was like 390 um, I'll double check with my calipers and then basically the, the bushing on top comes down and screws through and this is obviously a little smaller it's like 305 thousandths so what I'm gonna have to do is drill up on top to 305 thousandths so that we can get this bushing in and then from the bottom come in this distance here this doesn't go through the whole headstock but this distance here is going to have to be 390 I'll have to measure that and see how far up we come yeah that's 390 on that so that'll be uh, coming up from the bottom anyway I'm not going to do that tonight um, I believe I'm going to have to do this with just a cordless drill because uh, the drill press, press I was going to use this block to kind of back it because the neck you know is uh, it's not just the headstock it's the whole neck and this is you just can't get a good good stable surface so I can get it in here, here in the vise so I think this will be all right. Um, I'll think about it, but I think I'm just going to do it with the cordless drill. Well, I think that's it for now. Um, originally, we would have been very close to being done because I was uh, going to send the guitar out to have it finished uh, by the same guy that finished my first two in uh, nitrocellulose slacker. However, I've decided. I want to finish it myself just because I like to get experience finishing it and uh, I'm really um, kind of fascinated by the French polishing te technique I want to see how that shellac works so it's still going to be a while because I'm going to shoot the uh, the whole process the finishing process and I know the French polishing does take a while uh, it's pretty labor intensive but it really does give you just beautiful uh, from what I've seen uh, results on the guitars now this is my first time doing it so I don't know how beautiful it'll be but we'll uh, we'll see <laughs>